<laughs> David Burke, Burke Family Farms. How are you doing today? This right here is one of those cool things you hear about. You hear about, hey, yonder around here. Um, I got me a fig tree that grew on my silo. Well, I can see that, but actually seeing it for your eyes is kind of a cool thing. See, each has different holes. You come inside, it's not a very old tree. I'm not trying to say this tree's been here since God gave us the great gift of figs. But I'm trying to say it's about six inches around at the base. Let me move this out of the way. You can see back in yonder in there. Deep, it's about like it's six inches around at the base. because it grows 50 feet straight up to get light. Figs are survivors. I keep mentioning this. What we like, we like the fact to survive. So, I'm going to climb up there. See if I don't Let's find a pig. I see one yonder right there, I'm gonna eyeball it. So, ooh, that one had some uh, our friendly visitors in it. <laughs> we call those ants. And you get a handful of ants in your pants, and you got to dance. So, like I said here, it's a little bit different than the viola fig, in that even though it's red, ripe, a really red inside here so it's a, it definitely is a different fig hmm. uh, miss pearl so am would you taste that kershaw wonderful brand this knife was given to me by my aunt and uncle aunt taffy and uncle richard after their son um, rick passed on that was what about eight years ago and he was out on Thanksgiving splitting firewood back of their property because they live up in Oregon. And um, just killed over a heart attack. You know, some people, uh, what can you say? I carry his knife because I know he was meant to be my angel. And um, brought me good luck all these years. I come home to my wife and kids. This is a beautiful, beautiful. Okay, cousin Rick. <laughs> He was looking over me when we were just young. He was my older cousin, not since I was the youngest. Heck, I got a photo of me on a little pony, actually, and then him on the big horse, and then him on the little pony, and me on the big horse. And I think I was two years old. It was, a, uh, yeah. I can remember him taking me to the beach, and he, he, well, hell, he was six, seven in his stocking. So, I mean, we called him a tree once in a while. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, good memories. Uh, just sorry, just a little memory that just came across my path when it comes to figging. This has a really, really thin skin, as you can see, a deep, deep red. Mm. Mm. Crunchy. But it's not a seedy, like. Mm. Not too overpowering. Kind of, kind of catch that flavor. It's got some tang to it. Yeah, but it's like see, a that's berry why tang, but it, it's not a citrusy. She's gonna have to see. It just tastes good. So that's a problem with me and my my palate. It just tastes good. It tastes so good, I'm gonna grow. So, we're gonna figure a way to get ourselves a cut. 
reach back in here in the dark and get this little tree. For family farms, find to find the perfect pig. Loving how hardy they are. I'm gonna call this fig the Rick. Well, which is not, I know it's a girl's name, so I might come up with a better name. Um, but like I said, I just love the fact that it grows one way up in the dark, it still finds a light. And if the rest of us in the world, no matter how the darkness comes apart our lives, if we can still venture towards the light, I think we'll be doing all right just like this fig. Now this small cutting here will be born not of darkness of light and it will have a loving, loving time. David Burke, Burke Family Farms. Keep on figging. Plant a fig, make a friend.